Hello, everyone. Wishing you a very happy new year. Um, I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas or whatever festivity you might have been celebrating. Um, but, you know, let's start the new year off with a new challenge. Now, the challenge for this week in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, is Shashiko. Um, I want to do sort of a mixture of a shape challenge as well as a, a colour challenge. I was given this beautiful beautiful set the colour meditation deck for Christmas by Lisa Solomon let me just open it up and um, show you what's inside so we've got um, a booklet that explains how it works and these wonderful prompt cards as well let me just pop those off to one side so we've got these lovely prompt cards let me just give you a bit um, of a flick through with a very very brief explanation um, on the opposite side um, so that's the deck there. And the one that I've pulled out for this week is Shashiko. So Shashiko um, is a traditional Japanese embroidery style used for both decoration and reinforcement of fabrics, um, but applies well to watercolours. And that's what I want to do today. I want to try and develop my watercolour skills throughout the whole of 2024. Now, there are no instructions as to how to um, achieve this. It's just a prompt. So, you know, I've got to use my imagination here and work out how I'm going to do this. I want to follow this shape, though, because I think it's absolutely fabulous. Let me just uh, move that out of the way so that um, it's not um, in uh, elbow reach of me knocking it off my desk. So this, the size wise, I think will fit the palette that I want to use. And this is the Academy Watercolour Paper by Bao Hong. This is the set that I got from Stationery Pal. I'll leave the link to all of the supplies that I'm using in today's challenge in the description box below but this is more or less um, the right size for me to be able to use so what I'm going to do is just line it up with the edges of my pad and just draw um, a line here um, on the edge and what I'll do here is put the colours that I'm going to use as today's um, challenge on the left hand side. I do want to eventually add some masking tape as well so that um, I don't go over my lines. In fact I think I'll do that now before I get started. I've got some washi tape here so I'm just going to add that to the left hand side here like this. And I'm going to add two or three pieces here to cover it all up so that I don't end up splashing my beautiful watercolour paper. Um, because as you know, I'm a very messy um, worker. So there we go. That's, um, that's that coloured, uh, covered. And then what I want to do is draw myself a line down the middle. So we'll do that. Let's work out the central point. Now, sometimes it's easier to work in inches and sometimes it's easier to work in centimetres. Um, in this case, I'm going to go for inches, um, five inches. So that my, my central point is two and a half. And let's turn that around. And two and a half again will be my central point so I'm just going to draw myself a line here like this and then draw myself a line at the two and a half centimeter two and a half inch sorry point and then I need to work out the halfway point here and here and here and here as well so of course that will be um, one and a quarter so let's Let's do that. So one and a quarter and also four, three and three quarters. So I'm going to draw myself a line here as well. Same at the top. Whoops, haven't gone quite the way across, but that doesn't really, really matter. Let's do this again. And then again, I'm just going to do my halfway point here. Um, and here so there we have it there are my grid lines and then I've pulled out some bottle tops in fact I've got this bottle top which I think has come from um, some washing liquid and I've also got this tub of Daniel Smith watercolour ground as well um, these are quite good because um, they're um, similar in size so this will work quite well to give me this gap here this white space around my circles that I'm trying to achieve so I am going to start off. Now, how do I want to do this? I've drawn myself um, a line 
which is in the center of my, my, my lid so that I know where to um, aim it. And I'm just going to draw my first circle here. So that's the first one. Go down and in fact, where's my where's my mark? I'm standing up to, to do this. I hope I don't get my head um, in the way. This does not have to be perfect. It's got to be there or thereabouts. And then I'm going to do the same on the sides. So I'll go off camera and do that, do that now. It's really hard, as I've said, to um, do it on camera and to be able to see what, what I'm doing. There we go. I'm using my, my line here. I'll do the next one. So I've got my four basic circles and now I need to do four more here like this, trying to line it up with the centre here, making sure that my circle is at the top, or my semicircle in this case is at the top here like, like so. And two more at the bottom. There, and another one just, just here. And then of course we need to do another couple of circles here. So again, lining it up with this corner here and making sure that that doesn't um, touch. So drawing around there like that. And again, going down to the bottom, the bottom here. And I'll do exactly the same um, on the left hand side. So lining my cup up with this, this edge here and this point here. I'm doing the, the same, the same again. So lining it up with the top here and just making sure that it doesn't overlap that circle, circle here. Then the next thing I want to do is use um, my little bottle here and I'm just going to go inside each of those shapes just to create my white space. So I just want to sort of have a look and make sure that I've got that fairly um, central. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but just drawing my circle went a bit off um, there but we can rub away some of these lines and so I'm just going to go inside here I think that will do fine Hang on. need a bit more a bit more lead and I'm just going to go inside all of these and then we can tidy this up and, and rub away some some of these lines. This looks a lot more complicated than it than it really is. So there we are, really quick and easy. That's my basic outline. So now what I want to do is just use an eraser just to get rid of just some of these pencil marks. just so that I know where to where to paint. So I'm getting rid of these lines down the center because I don't need those anymore. So I'm just going to carefully rub all of these areas away. Now I'm going to be using watercolors to create my shishiko design, um, but you could do it in paper collage if you wanted to. You could do it in fabric, do any style you like, but you know, this is the basic um, outline. Now I'm going to be using my Kuritake Gansai Tambi watercolours. I've got the Art Deco set here and I've also got the recent set that I had from Stationery Pal. And I've been playing around with some colours. Originally I had six but um, I just want to use five. 
and I would encourage you to use maybe five colours for this. I've got three bluey greens here. I've got um, an indigo, I've got this beautiful colour here and this green and then two contrasting colours in these peachy pinks. Um, I did also pull out this green but I don't know, that doesn't work so well for me. So these are the five colours that I've decided to use. So the indigo is from this colour palette and the others are from this um, Art Nouveau and I'll leave the link to all of these products in the description box below. So the pinks are these two here and then the green is is this one and then this blue here is is this one here and I just think um, that will make a really nice palette. So I'm just going to spray the colours that I want to use. Let's give these um, a bit of a, a drenching and also the indigo and let those sit for a minute or two whilst I pull out some other supplies. As far as paint brushes are concerned, I'm going to be using these Martini watercolour brushes. These have got um, a bit of a snap and these are perfect for getting into details areas, uh, detailed areas. And of course, I need to get into these corners here. So this is my paint brush of choice, but you know, use what ever you have and I'm going to start off by putting some of this dark green colour I think this is my darkest colour and I'm going to put some of this um, onto onto a palette this is just a paper plate this is just one that I got from um, Costco these are ones that we use for barbecues in the summer you know when we've got loads of people around and we can just you know just pop them all together and just wash them and reuse them so I'm going to to use this I'm going to spray it down as well just because I don't want this to be too dark and I'm going to start off um, by following the pattern um, where's my little here we go here's my design um, so I'm going to do these two um, diamond shapes first so here goes um, let's try and paint these and I'm just going to be as careful as I can trying to follow my lines This does not have to be perfect. We can do our best and, and that's it. I haven't got a particularly steady, steady hand, but I'm sure this will be absolutely lovely regardless. And I find it easier to move my paper um, around. So do whatever is easiest for you. But I just think this is a great way to practice our watercolour skills. Um, our brush control and also, you know, learn about colours and our colour options as well. So there we go. We've got the basic um, outline shape. Trying not to get the cover of my, my watercolour pad um, into my plate. And then I'm just going to fill in um, the centre. Whilst that's drying, I'm going to do the other larger um, diamond shapes. Um, so these here. And I'm going to use the darker shade, which is, is this one here. So I'm just going to add some of this to a separate plastic plate. I think I said paper plate that I was using um, earlier. This is a plastic um, plate and I'm doing um, a separate plate because I don't want to mix my contrasting colours and end up with a horrible muddy mess. So I'm just putting some of this onto my palette um, here. So there we go, we've got that. We can spray this with a little bit of water as well just to thin it out. And the reason I'm doing these is because they're not touching my green, although this is drying really, really quickly. So I'm just going to focus. I've got too much water water on this. Let's um, Let's get rid of some of that. So I'm just going to do this, these sections next. And it may well be that I'll be able to see some of my pencil marks, but I'd rather that you be able to see exactly um, what I'm what I'm doing. So trying to be again as careful as I can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can see here I don't have a steady hand at all. Just enjoy the process. So filling. Filling this in, loading my brush with more paint as I as I need to. You can use any types of watercolour paints. 
um, for this but I would encourage you to use no more than um, five five colours and choose your colours um, wisely make sure that they all match now it's funny because I've got to this stage and I want to change my plan completely. I've decided that I'm going to use this colour blue, so that's that's this one here, for all of my remaining um, flower petals. And then I've got um, another idea for filling in um, these white areas here. So I'm just going to add some of that paint. Let's um, Let's do it now to my to my plate on the opposite side so let's add plenty of this onto this side here to make sure I've got enough to fill my petals I'm going to water this down um, again I think this is the most gorgeous gorgeous color so just wiping off um, some of my excess paint and I'm just going to be as careful as I can again just to fill Fill this in here. And I'm going to do this with all of my petals. This is starting to look really William Morris to me. This is coming along nicely. I just love these colours. So I need to fill in my white spaces and I'm going to go for the indigo blue. So that's this one here. So just add a little bit of water. And I'm just going to put this onto my plate now. Um, in fact, let's use my, my spray bottle to do that. If I need more paint, I could always pull, pull some out. I don't want it to be too dark, so I am watering it down um, somewhat. And I'm just going to be as careful as I can. You can see that I've still got a couple of wet patches and that's okay. Um, but I think I'll start off at the bottom and let's just fill in these these white areas and see how that looks once we've we've finished. I'm going to go round in an arc. I think that's probably the the best way and neatest way perhaps to to do it. And then we need to decide what we can do to really embellish this and um, make it um, make it sing, as it were. So here we are. We're almost done. I absolutely love the way that this looks. Now I want to add some detail, some stitching detail to the indigo blue. I love the indigo blue. I want to use a much narrower paintbrush. Which one do I want to use? I've got two tiny ones here if I can get them out. Um, I've got this one here which is a number one. I've also got, um, is this a number zero? A number zero as well. So either of those would, would work. Use whatever you have for this. Oh my gosh, what do I, what do I want to use? I think I feel um, safer using, using this one, this one here, I think. This one's more like um, a rigger brush. I don't know. I think I might need to um, practice with um, with either of these first. They've both got sizing um, on them. So I just want to pop them into water first and just get any of that off before I use either of them because I haven't used these um, before. So so let's have a look. I think that's um, that's off now. How do these how do these look? I think I'm going to go for the number number zero, you know. And instead of using this colour here, I've decided I want to use a metallic. I think a metallic would be absolutely wonderful. Now, I'm going to be using my Etcher watercolours. Um, again, you'll find the link to these in the description box below. And we've got this gorgeous colour here called coffee. And if I if I hold this up, it's very, very similar to this colour here. So that's what I'm going to go for. I just think this is just going to be a beautiful um, addition, metallic addition to my page. So I just need to spray this, get that um, activated, maybe leave it for a second or two to um, do its thing. And then I want to add two lines of stitching, one on the inside and one on the out. So let's just 
go down like so. And you won't really see the metallics until this has um, has dried. So let's just rinse rinse that off. I'm going to go on the outside of this as well. And this time I'm just going to go all the way around that um, that arch. I'm not being perfect about this, as you can see. But I'm just going to keep going until the whole of it is um, is filled in. My metallics are now done and dried. And if I hold it up to the light, can you see how pretty that looks? Let's see if we can take this masking tape off. Have we got um, a, a clean, crisp line we have? Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? I love it. I'm so happy with that. Now, what I do want to do is just add swatches of the colours that I've used today, just on the left-hand side. So let's add these. I'm just going to go directly from the palette that I was using. So we used, of course, the green. So we'll add a, a swatch of, of that. That was um, the colour that I used to start off with. Of course, I used this beautiful um, blue as well. Let's just make sure that um, I'm nice and clean. I haven't got much of this left, but um, let's add this. That was a beautiful colour as well. That was the colour I used here. Love that. Love these um, Nouveau, Art Nouveau colours from the Gansai Tambi set. As I've said, I'll leave links to all of the colours that I've used today in the description box below. Let's see if I've got um, enough of this um, inky, inky blue. I think I might need a bit more. Let's go directly from the palette. Of course, I used that as well. Mine was a bit darker. And that was what I used for the outline. And then, of course, I used the um, the pink. I've got a bit left on my palette, but um, I am going to use a little bit more just to um, darken this slightly. Let's add a little bit of water. So we used we used that as well for these colours, these shapes here. And then, of course, I used my metallic. So finally, let's just add a swatch of this beautiful colour here as well. Look how gorgeous that is. So those are the colours that I used for my, my lovely painting. So just to recap, the challenge for this week is Sashiko. Here we go. Let me just hold that up so that you can see it. Um, so re research that um, if you want to. Um, choose no more than five colours. Um, you can use less if you want to. Choose your colours wisely. Of course, I chose um, four solid colours and, of course, my metallic. You can choose any colours you like, but I hope you enjoy this challenge. If you'd like to follow along with this challenge, um, please feel free to join us in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. You'll find links to the Facebook group in the description box below. But if you've enjoyed my video today, as always, I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. But most importantly, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.